Is it okay to get a leg up on goals by having a shortcut? That's what we're going to talk about today. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you don't stop. Confucius, is that true? And that's what we're going to talk about today. I've been confronted just in a short period of time with the concept of not cheating, but shortcuts to your goals. Is it okay for you to take shortcuts that some people consider to be cheating in order to get a leg up, in order to try to do better with our goals? I mean, think about it. There are ways that people are trying to go about their goals, like Ozempic, or maybe waiting for an inheritance to pay off your bills. What about ChatGPT and AI? I just watched a whole webinar where they were talking about putting your podcast to be completely written and maybe even voiced in AI. That sounds like a lot of cheating. What about if you have rich parents or the fact that I was terrible about paying my bills on time just because I was super disorganized. And once I got scheduling software, to-do lists, and even the ability to schedule bills, I got better. Is that me getting better or is that cheating? Or even think about things like gastric bypass surgery or hiring a trainer and a chef to help you lose weight. At what point is something going down the wrong direction? Or are any of these just completely fine? That's what we're going to talk about today. I had to laugh because I was watching the South Park movie about Ozempic and how Cartman wanted to get on Ozempic. And they had an interesting take on it. Hartman kept calling it his willpower, that he lacked willpower and this drug would give him the willpower he needed to lose weight. Is that what it is? Is that officially willpower? My own self, I have been overweight since I was probably nine years old. I have struggled with it my whole life. I worked my way down and then I injured myself and I was laid up for nearly two years, gained weight back. Now I'm on the slow path down again, but it is very slow. What if I can get a leg up? What if I can take something like Ozempic and do better and lose my weight faster? Then afterwards, I could keep the healthy lifestyle instead of having to constantly be fighting my weight. I could start just living my life, having my adventures and keep the weight off. Or what if people are out there using ChatGPT to do something they're terrible at? In my opinion with ChatGPT in the podcast, and I've said this before, I think if you are a podcast, the podcast has to be your own research, your own effort, your own words, your own voice. I have a blog that goes with my podcast. I'm not a writer. And I don't consider my blog to be a writing masterpiece. Having AI help me with my show notes, having it help me with my transcripts, saves me a lot of time and does a better job than probably I would do. Is that okay? I think that if you're writing a blog and these are supposed to be your words or even like a book, AI should just not be used in order to write your book. Maybe help you do a little research or take on a different perspective, I guess. But that's your thing. So I think whatever your thing is, you can't cheat at that. It has to be your thing. Same is true with your job and your occupation. You must do the work. What about these auxiliary types of goals we have, like paying your bills, losing weight? What about getting a tutor so that they help you? learn something that you were struggling with. Are all these things okay? And like I said, in the past probably two weeks, I have been confronted with this topic in more than one webinar and in my own decisions when it comes to my health and everything else. Small steps are great. And I love small steps and you know how much I love a small step. But what if it's time to take a big step and use something that will give you a big step up so that you can get your goals a little bit faster. Is that okay? Your lessons of your small steps will carry on. And thinking about it, I thought there's certain things that are great once you get your goals, like financial goals. If you are someone who is constantly in debt, my parents got into debt very early and my grandmother bailed them out. It saved our family when I was a kid. But what happened? My parents kept getting into debt over and over again. They never paid off that debt to where it cost, where it hurt a little bit, so that that idea not to go back into debt never reached them. And at one point, when my grandmother died, I had a little bit of debt, and I paid it off with the inheritance I got. Again, I didn't learn a lesson either. 
It wasn't until then I started paying off things, paying for it myself, having a budget and a structure. I finally learned how to gut it out, how to be better with money because I went through this monetary struggle on my own. I learned a lesson from it. What if you take a weight loss drug, you get gastric bypass, or you hire a chef and a trainer and spend a lot of money offloading the willpower to your health to something else or someone else? If you don't go through a learning process, maybe you're just going to put it back. A long time ago, I got into one of those prepackaged diet meals where basically every week you picked up your week's worth of food and you just ate that food. And you know what? It worked great. I lost a ton of weight on that. I didn't learn any lessons with it. And it wasn't until I gutted it out with the help of my trainer, who was fantastic at this, I learned the lesson of losing weight, of being incremental in that. But at some point, too, that even the incrementalism can take so long that you lose something in the process. What happened was, is I damaged the tendons in my ankle. But with the weight I gained by being laid up for two years, it has been harder on my tendons for the ankles. And I did about 25 miles hiking when I went camping, and boy, I felt it. And it suddenly struck me, if I don't do something soon about this weight, maybe I'm not going to be able to walk or hike at all. And then suddenly the idea came to me, maybe I need to do something more drastic. No more small steps. Maybe it's time to take a big step. But what point is that okay? Is it okay to go through that kind of thing? Now, what's interesting about it is there's nothing ethical, I think, involved in any of this. You're not going to be a worse person. Taking a shortcut is not going to make you a lesser human being. You're not really cheating like you would cheat on a paper, unless, like you said, you're using AI to do your primary thing. Instead, these are all kind of step ups, helpful outside willpowers, outside tools. And so there's nothing moral or ethical about it either way. But even still, when I started looking into this and started looking at people commenting, I just took a look at Twitter. What do people say about taking Ozempic or getting gastric bypass? What most people said is, what? Suck it up. Just stop eating and exercise more and just lose the weight and stop using all these crutches. Oh, crutches. Hmm. Now, what's interesting about it is some of these people were the very people saying that you can write books and podcasts through AI. Everyone has their preferred shortcut and they think little of it. But your shortcut, that's a bad thing. They take the very thing they're great at and say, you should gut it out and then take the very thing they struggle with and tell you to use shortcuts because that's a smart way to go. Everyone is lenient with themselves and hard on strangers. And many people scorn at you for not being good at the thing they're good at. So let's look at the example of weight loss. If you're in great shape, if you're very healthy, if you're younger, if you're male even, your hormones are in the right composition. You have a long runway ahead of you. The standard methods of losing weight, incremental methods, will do great for you. If you don't have a lot of weight to lose, you'll get to your goals in no time at all. But if not, every six months, you're putting pressure on your joints. You're putting pressure on your health. Maybe you're older. Maybe you are screwed up with your hormones or the way your systems work or you're already pre-diabetic. It's not going to work very well at all. It works really well when your health is great. But what happens when you start getting into situations where you have what they call metabolic syndrome, where there is so much insulin and sugar floating in around in your body, you're no longer capable of losing weight in the normal, healthy way to the same degree a, a regular person can. Or you start getting injured and maybe you can't walk so well. I have some friends who can't walk. And so now the option to go for a walk around the block has gone away from them. Now they're stuck. Is it okay for them to do shortcuts so that they can get past this thing that's laid them up? What about finance? Got yourself into debt, maybe something legitimate or something frivolous. You're incurring interest. You can't get out of the hole. Now maybe you're making good money, but you can't pay off the debt at all. What if there's a shortcut way to do it and get back to your life so that you can start moving forward? Maybe your parents, maybe you take equity out in your house. There's ways of doing shortcut there. 
is it beneficial for you to get that leg up, get finished with the process so you can move on with your life and get better? Again, not a moral consideration, but it is, is it even good for us? And part of the problem is, is that if we do shortcuts, one, we might not learn a lesson. And when we get off of the shortcut, we might just go back to the way it was. We haven't learned anything. We haven't struggled through anything. Just like that package of food that came to my house every week. I didn't learn a lesson in that at all. But then there's things like the bill pay situations where I can schedule all my bills. And the question is, is do I have to learn anything? If I can schedule this and do it at a regular time, must I learn to persevere, put a stamp on an envelope and just send it out with a check? Because that is the old school way of getting things done. Maybe cause you to lose trust. If I started having AI writing this podcast, maybe even reading this podcast, maybe you would lose trust with me. This is no longer Jill's podcast. Maybe if I did something, I guess, even worse than that, I'm trying to think what that is, maybe I'm going to get in trouble with the law because now I'm actually cheating. Or again, I lose an opportunity to learn a valuable lesson about perseverance. I talked about how the fact that my using AI to help me write my blog posts and the show notes probably means I am not going to become a better writer anytime soon. I think, in my opinion, as I'm going through using Grammarly to help me write these articles and blog posts, it actually is teaching me something. And it sends me a really fantastic digest every week saying what my number one mistakes are. So in a sense, I feel like I am learning something. But what if, too, using these shortcuts makes me feel helpless, like I can't get my own goals? Now I'm stuck and I have to rely on external things to do something. Can it affect my opinion of myself if I use some kind of a shortcut, lose some self-esteem? And the last part of it is, too, is will other people look at me poorly if they think, let's say I went on Ozempic and they say, oh, well, Jill has a podcast on small steps. She's not using small steps. She's taking a drug that's doing the same. If you think I've lost credibility because of that, maybe then it also affects what other people think of me. And there's another piece of it, too. Again, I saw so many people and I talked to some friends about what they thought about it. And some friends were like, if a person needs some kind of a help, if they're sort of stuck because of the, the medical situation they got themselves into, or time is running out. Even for me, as I'm losing weight, and I am losing weight, and I talked to my doctor today, and he was impressed with the weight that I have been losing, but maybe it's become so slow because slow and steady and small steps and everything else like that means that maybe for the next decade, I'm not that much thinner. It takes a toll on my legs, on my ankles, on my knees. And I still end up in a bad place because small steps, slow steps. I always think, too, of you watch these television shows like Survivor. Those days, I think they're 25 days on Survivor, 45 days. I don't know. They lose a drastic amount of weight, but there is no temptation. There's actually no food. And so a lot of times when you look at the reunion shows, many people have gained it back very quickly because, again, they didn't learn anything. The crash diet, like even like in the biggest loser television show, wasn't sustainable. Survivor Island is not sustainable. And even so, there could be some health risks by this, what they used to call crash dieting. Then it can also cause you to go down, get your goal, and then zip right back out of your goal again. And now you feel even worse than you did before. When you lose that amount of weight, you lose a lot of muscle and fat. When you gain it back, it all comes back as fat. So every time you drastically lose weight and come back up again, you are in a worse position than you were. There are some pro sides of it. You get a quick leap ahead. Maybe if you're in a medical situation, you can get out of that medical situation faster before, like I said, diabetes sets in, before you kill your knees and your ankles again. Maybe something that you've dreamed of your whole life is suddenly within your grasp and that you can get there. And just to say that maybe if you're taking a weight loss drug or going to a trainer or maybe even ask your parents for money, you can still learn in the process. Just like I use Grammarly 
to help me edit my podcasts and my blogs, I am learning in that process because it has an aspect to teach me something about. I'll give you another example that when I was using ChatGPT, I asked it about how I could create this formula to create a spreadsheet I needed for work. And it just did it for me. Boom, done. And I said, no, 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 write up a document to teach me how each of the functions work and how I can use these functions together in order to create the spreadsheet by myself. And it did it. So instead of using ChatGPT to cheat or get a leg up on my project, I actually had it help me learn something new. So I think there is a place where you can feel that you are gaining something out of it. What if a person goes on Ozempic, loses a bunch of weights, and adopts a healthy lifestyle? They start running, they start hiking, they start exercising more because they're not huffing and puffing. Again, their legs and their knees and their ankles feel better. Their heart isn't pounding out of their chest. And this allowed them to do something they weren't going to be able to do for a very long time early on and get healthier faster. And just to give you some other examples, it was funny. I Googled around to see what kind of other types of, oh, I guess, leg ops hacks are there that people do. And some of the ones that were listed were using steroids to build more muscle. But as soon as you stop using the steroids, it all goes away. What about using Adderall, which is a cognitive enhancer, helps you think better. People use it to go through college. Is that okay if you're going through a short period of time trying to do it? But what happens? When you leave it, you get your first job out of college and now you're not using the Adderall. Or is it possible it's causing negative effects on your health? What about something like what Tim Ferriss did, where he outsourced his job, I think, to other people? Like he paid other people to do aspects of his job so he could create what he called the four hour work week. Well, you know what? You talk to any boss out there, they will fire you for that. That is cheating. You are not doing your job. You may think you're working smarter, but instead you're cheating about it. So again, it has negative repercussions, but I think what it does is if you are using it to do something good, if you are going to then work hard to learn the lessons, take that opportunity that's being given to you with whatever method you're using and move on with your life increase whatever it is you were able to do before and start doing it better, I think it can have a significant impact. I was prepared at the beginning when I started writing this podcast of being against it. Small steps, short steps. We're going we're gonna to plug away. We're going to do all the things. But the more I looked into it and the more I read testimonies of people using gastric bypass, Ozempic, people who have used AI to do something that they're terrible at or learn something new, I kind of softened on it a little bit. And part of my turnaround on the whole thing is I use an app for birding called Merlin. And you will see a lot of very experienced birders call it cheating. It is an app on iOS and Android. And what it does is it listens through the phone's microphone to hear what birds it hears. The AI compares it to all the birds that are out there in your neck of the woods. You download packs for it. And it tells you what's singing out there. And so people see a lot of very amateur or new bird people using it and saying, oh, look at that. I just heard a scarlet tanager. You don't know what it is. You haven't ever seen it. You don't even know for sure that's what it is. Are you really sure? In fact, if you get a bunch of kids giggling, it will call it a trumpeter swan. It it can be wrong from time to time. But what I do and my friend and I do is we will see something and it'll say, there is an intigo bunting. Oh, now we use the app because it lights up every time it hears now that indigo bunting. We look for it. Okay, just saying it sounds like it's a little bit to the right. So we go run over to the right and we go find the bird. Because it helps us know what we're hearing, we go and seek it out. We ensure before counting it or crediting ourselves with seeing it that we are actually seeing that specific bird. Because in the end, isn't it bird watching about watching the birds instead of just walking around a park with your phone out, having some app listen to it? The last part of it, too, is I'm not very good with music. I'm not a very musical person. 
And so while my friend is pretty good at listening to bird songs, I'm not very good at it. But now when I walk around with Merlin, I say, oh, that's a red-eyed vireo. Cool. Now I start learning the songs and it is helping speed up my learning of songs much better. Plus, it records what I heard on my phone so I can listen to it later. Verify. Was that actually the bird that the app thinks it is? And I plan on using some of these for the podcasts that I have when it comes to nature. So it is actually teaching me something. I was camping in my tent and the red-eyed vireo has a sound that sounds a little bit like a little this, a little that, a little this, a little that. And I woke up in my tent at, I don't know, like four in the morning and I was going, a little this, a little that. What? It was a red-eyed vireo right over my tent singing. And in my brain, I got used to its song that I could pick it out even when I was half awake. So I am learning. It matters what you're going to do with it. Are you going to take the opportunity of a shortcut, a hack, maybe even a cheat towards your goals and do something beneficial with it? Get a leg up, lose the weight and get in shape, have a healthy life. Pay off your debts and start saving money, using AI to learn something that you never knew how to learn before, or maybe offloading something you're just terrible at and going past that task. Or are you going to let it diminish you, make you feel less of yourself, and never learn the lesson? Get back in debt, get back to losing the weight, and lean on whatever it is too much. My challenge to you is think about something that could give you a leg up on one of your goals. Maybe it's something like a technology that would help you exercise better, keep you accountable, like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, something like that. And consider how something that could make your life a little bit better, a little bit faster, might be able to help you on one of your goals. Consider how ethical it is. Consider if you're going to learn a lesson, if it's going to make you better at whatever it is you're trying to learn. Or is it possible it will be detrimental? And I would say that if it doesn't cost much money or it's something that's not going to damage you, your reputation, your ability to do things in life, try it out. See if there's some way shortcut can give you a little bit of a leg up on your goals. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you going on this journey with me. Again, it was something that was just kind of burning in my mind all week long. And I thought... Maybe we could all get some benefit about thinking about these shortcuts, life hacks. Remember, you can always email me and give me your opinion or let me know what shortcuts you found by emailing me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I would love to hear what kind of shortcuts you found in life too. And remember, our path to our goals sometimes are big leaps and not just small steps.